Falls back here on the Boss Man Show with Cal Poly Mustangs head coach John Smith out of the Big West Conference. Coach Smith, good to see you, man. How you, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Jr. Coach, I can't complain, man. Enjoying my uh, going on my eight month vacation, coach. So, <laughs> I'm trying to make the best of it. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. Tough times, but we'll all get through it. Yes, indeed. Well, coach, let me take you back to March 11th, which was my birthday, when everything shut down in the NBA and college basketball started to shut down. So, where were your where were your team man, at that point, March 11th? And how did you manage going from being on campus to spring break to not seeing you guys anymore than being home virtual? So, how was that transition for you and your, your staff, coach? First of all, my birthday is March 12th, so you know. Uh, Shout out to both of us. Yes, but, uh, Pisces. <laughs> during that time, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, during that time, I was um, I was actually out recruiting because, uh, you know, we our season ended abruptly, um, the last game of conference. Um, and so I was down going to see our incoming freshman who was playing in the state tournament game. And I, I heard – I knew something was brewing that night, you know, with uh, the Jazz game and, and that – being canceled um so immediately it it made me realize that we're about to go through something different and and our our staff has to be prepared for it so i called our our coaches and and tried to get them to understand that you know start preparing we got to do something differently uh it looks like they're going to shut down a lot of things and you know so we just started preparing for you know how we're going to recruit moving forward virtually and 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 uh you know just how we're going to meet with guys you know, but no one knew what was going to happen. Uh, but it was it was a shock. And I'm pretty sure, Coach, your academic advisor played a big role because guys going from being on campus to being virtual, and when they have to, they can go to class with their own devices from from their, from their homes, and, and if they miss class, coach can't make them run the day they miss some class. So how was that holding those guys accountable uh, with being at home uh, with the academic advisor, the ends of themselves? I know they have Blackboard, but hey, it's good on online assignment. They can't get punched for it right away. <laughs> You're right about that, but uh, fortunately for us, you know, we're we're at a a, a high academic institution that that requires uh, that you, you you bring in a certain type of student athlete that understands the importance of academics. So our guys really handled it. Um, the, the the transition was seamless. It was pretty good. Uh, but you know, we we tried to make sure that we met with them uh, virtually every week. Um, still had our 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 breakout meetings. You know, each coach has four guys that they have to monitor weekly. And uh, they stayed on top of them via Zoom and make sure that their time management skills were were on point and and you know they were turning the assignments and were prepared for tests to come and and we have our best quarter academically you know and and some people may call it the the coronavirus boost but you know I'll take it I'll take it any way we can get it. Oh yeah, I mess with the APRs out here. We know how that is. So any way you can get it, hey. <laughs> It looks good for sure. <laughs> right, right, no doubt. <laughs> now, coach, strength, now strength conditioning wise, coach, I know the guys at home don't own devices. Now, me, I have a hoop in my backyard here, but everybody they bless as our they have a, a hoop in their backyard. So, how do you kind of keep the guys kind of in quasi basketball shape, doing things to kind of keep their bodies to a certain level and get some shots up if they could? So, how was that process trying to kind of, kind of get guys kind of in the shutdown a little bit of work here, here and there? Well, our, our strength and conditioning coach did a did a great job of of you know showing some videos of of how to do some band work and and some body movement, um, some body exercises, and and they did virtual workouts you know every week with our strength and conditioning coach as well. Um, and she she sent out some some workouts for them and and just checked in with them periodically. And then our 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 coaches made some uh, basketball workouts for the guys. Um, what they can do and, and, you know, you know, in the backyard, if, if they have a hoop, uh, because, you know, everything was shut down. So we just tried to really harp on them and, and get them to understand that the importance of trying to stay in, in shape because it's so quick to get out of shape, out of basketball shape at that. So, you know, if you can't get in the gym, you can at least do some push up sit ups and you can run outside on the track. So we, we tried to do a lot of that together as a team. And coach, how's it been seeing your guys back? Um, did it, did it? How's it been trying to get those guys kind of get back in the rhythm? Because I know you don't want to go too hard with the guys, and 
cause a knee, ankle, something nagging all year long. So how's it been since you got you guys back out there with you guys doing workouts? Yeah, you know, great point. You know, um, fortunately for us in California, we sit in an area that's, that's really not impacted as much as Southern California and Northern California. We sit in the Central Coast. So we were able to get our guys back June 15th, where people, you know, some other schools in California still haven't gotten their guys back yet. So, but to your point, we, we slowly um, brought them back in. You know, they had to, for two weeks, you know, just do individual workouts on their own. So we gave them some workouts. And then once we hit July 21st, we were able to do our, our summer access with the, with the guys, but we still, you know, socially stayed socially distant, uh, three to a basket and just did skill work. And, you know, from a, a perfectionist, a coach, you know, every coach at this level, they're trying to get their system in and, and they want it, you know, perfected, but you, you can't, you can't right now with, with all the, all the uh, stipulations that you have to go through, um, with the quarantine and everything and, and, and socially distanced. So in my mind, I just tried to make sure that we got our guys just a lot of shots and, and a lot of fundamental work, you know, footwork um, offensively and defensively. And, you know, the system will take care of itself because everybody's going to be behind. Most definitely. And, you know, Coach, what's so crazy about it is that, hey, man, you know, this t- this period, you know who, the, who are the real ballers are because you have to be a self-starter right now and motivate yourself right now because you don't have that, that push from Coach to say, work out, get shots up. So now they kind of they don't have to get their self together. You really see who really cares about the love of the game and who doesn't. Definitely. Definitely. It, it, it definitely separates the, the – the, the good from the mediocre. And, and we always talk about in the recruiting process, intrinsic mo- motivation and extrinsic motivation. You know, do I have to dangle a carrot in front of you extrinsically to get you motivated to chase after it? Or do you have it within yourself to go after it? And, and um, there's, there's ways that we try and pick and pull during a conversation with a kid to see if they have that intrinsic motivation. And fortunately for us, we have a lot of guys that do. Um, and and uh, they've done a great job so far. Now, Coach, I know also with the pandemic, we had to deal with racial unrest in our country we got going on right now. So how do you address that with, with your team and trying to, you know, get them to understand that, hey, we took off that Cal Poly gear. You're just a young black man in America. You're a young, you know, everybody from another country, wherever. You're just a, a young man. And if you don't handle this the right way or some may go against you and how to handle the situation when they come up. So how do you kind of go about your young men trying to teach them as we get yeah, this Worked in our country with all the unrest we had since the murders of George Floyd, Amal R. Barry Brown Taylor, and others <laughs> over the past few months. Yeah, you know, um, and, and to that point, like you and I know, uh, as a head coach and a leader, it's your responsibility to understand that you have to put your, yourself in the in the shoes of of an eighteen to twenty two year old, and think about it. You know, when I was eighteen to twenty two, you know, that's when. Um, the Rodney King's beating, beatings took place, and I was in California, um, and, and how angry I was and, and how I wanted to just react in an anger, ang- angrily way, you know. And so when the George Floyd incident went down, the first thing I did was call my team and, and tried to talk to them and, and, and get what, they're fi- what they were feeling. And, you know, quite a few were, were, were pretty pissed off, and, and I tried to re- re- remind them that anger is one letter short of danger and, and, and how you respond to it you know, can, can have some big ramifications. So you want to, you know, take a deep breath, you know, get all the information that you can and, and try and make sure that you are using your platform in the right way. We know that that was murder. We know that that was racially motivated. But how can we change it? And, and what is it doing? You know, how can we make an impact in our community? You know, George Floyd didn't get murdered in our community. So to to protest and march and shut down, you know, businesses during a pandemic where they're already hurt, hurting for economic status, that probably wouldn't be the right way to do it in our community. So I was trying to get our guys to understand that probably meet with some police officers and, and meet with some, um, some people um, in the higher ups in the city and, and try and, you know, you know uh, get your voice heard maybe at a, at a park and, and get people to understand that, you know, there needs to be change. There needs to be police reform. There needs to be police education um, on 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 the pr- brutality and and the the racial profiling that goes on, and so forth and so on. So, 
we've had a lot of discussions about that. And, you know, fortunately for us, our guys have, have reacted in the right way. Um, but there's been some things that transpired in our community that didn't go right. But, um, but all we can do is continue to educate these guys and get them to use their platform the right way and, and, and point out what's right. And coach, I felt the same thing, you know, being in my thirties and I have a radio platform that stretches from, you know, Chattanooga to Macon and beyond digitally. And I decided to talk more about social issues as well, start a nonprofit. So I will tell you, coach, I've lost four sponsors because of this, but it's okay that I don't need them anyway, but it's time to make a change, do what's right for my community. I'm 33 years old. I can rate to college kids and, and keep people older than me as well. So I'm right in that perfect zone to kind of make impact. So I'm trying my best with the radio show here and the found nonprofit I was started. So I'm trying, Coach. Now I hope other young men listen to this interview will do the same thing because we can we can do it together in that change, do it the right way, be our, have a purpose, stage what you mission is, and go from there, Coach. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we we met with uh, well, I personally met with with a, a police officer, and and I tried to get inside knowledge of of what was going down. And, and he told me, he's like, Coach, I want you to get prepared. Um, those officers are going to get off in Kentucky, and the majority of the officers in Minnesota are going to get off because of policies and procedures. So we talked about how can that change, and how can we make that change? And it starts with voting and understanding what's on the ballot to change these policies and procedures within each community and each police force. And it starts right there, you know, because it's, it's, it's crazy that, that they want to, you know, not, not hold these uh, officers accountable for what they did. Well, you know, uh, here, 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 in, here in Atlanta, our DA was up for re-election and because he charged the two officers to kill the young man, Ray Shaw Brooks at the Wendy's in Southwest Atlanta, he lost the election. Because the police union, you know, got got together against him, so he lost the election too. So just see, we do the right thing, even if he still lose. But he, at least he lost the election doing the right thing, talking officers who killed that young man at Wendy's in Southwest Atlanta. So for me, you know, you know, you lost, you still won in my book. Exactly, exactly, one hundred percent. Now, coach, uh, you talked about recruiting virtually so how was it recruiting virtually were they able to kind of expand your reach uh save a little bit on the budget as well having to go out and travel and i was showing young men your campus virtually and doing virtual visits so how was that and were you is that something you keep doing going forward it was tough you know and we're gonna have to keep doing it moving forward because ncaa has uh extended the dead period all the way until january so we can't go out to recruit so we just have to you know get creative and uh, create different Zooms and, and uh, uh, you know, share our, our screen of, of our program of how we do things and, and how beautiful the campus is and, and how connected we are to people that can help extend this from a four-year degree to a 40-year degree. That's what we always try and harp on here. You know, um, the, the ball's going to stop bouncing one day soon, and, and, and you got to align yourself with people that can help you continue to be a professional in some way, shape, or form. And, and this this – this college does a great job of that, and I'm fortunate to be the head coach here. And we just try and paint that picture for whoever we talk to. Now, Coach, uh, how was it for you year one, man, and trying to, you know, re adjust to a new program, being a head coach now? Then COVID hits going into year two. So talk to us about your time so far at Cal Poly, how it was year one, and going to year two with all the things you had to deal dealt with going into year two. How's it been for you? You know, any time you take over a new program, there's going to be some, some – um, some hard times and some strife and, and adversity. And, and I knew that, you know, I've, I've been a part of a rebuild uh, everywhere I've been the last three times, you know, I took over a junior college program that in, in one of the toughest areas in California and rebuilt that to a championship uh, level. Uh, then moved on to another junior college program that, you know, was down on their luck and only had two players and rebuilt it. And by the year four, we won a championship, a state championship. And then with, with our good friend, yours and I, uh, uh, our friend DJ Taylor, mm -hmm. when we took over that, it was a mess. So I knew coming in here, it was, was going to be a challenge. And, you know, as it was, and, you know, but all you could do is continue to build and, and learn from, you know, those past three places that I was at and, and, and try and continue to 
focus on one year at a time and, and one game at a time, one day at a time, you know, and, and that's what we've been doing and, and just chipping away at it. And we feel that by year three, we'll be where we need to be. Um, we're, we're getting there. Uh, we're young this year because we brought in seven new guys and six of them are freshmen. So, you know, there's going to be some, some more growing pains on top of the COVID-19. So, uh, but I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm built for it. Well, tell us about your new guys. I'm going to ask you about it. kind of rare my mind, Coach. Tell us about your newcomers, who you have coming into your roster, the young men that's going to help build this Cal Poly Mustang program up for you. Tell us about those young, great young men you brought in there. Yeah, so, you know, we, we, we try and recruit kids that come from winning programs because to win is, is hard at any level. And it, ha- it, takes, it takes a selfless mindset. And uh, we have two kids from Etiwanda High School in Southern California that is probably one of the, the, the winningest co- – uh, high schools in Southern California in the area, and one of them, and Brantley Stevenson are, are are cut from a different cloth, and I think that they're going to be very special in this conference. Cameron Pierce is the point guard, and Etiwanda High School, mind you, has had two former point guards be in the NBA in in Darren Collison and Jordan McLaughlin, and he's cut from that same cloth. And then uh, Brantley Stevenson is a six four combo guard that's just nasty, you know he. he he doesn't care who's in front of him. He's going to try and attack you offensively and defensively. So we added those two guys. And then we added two guys from modern day, which is one of the winningest programs in the nation, um, a 6'4 combo guard by the name of Aiden Prukop and a 6'3 uh, uh, walk-on by the name of Ryan Evans that, that I think could be special. Um, and then we have a 6'7 uh, stretch four man from Utah uh, by the name of Dyson Kohler. And he's built kind of like Charles Barkley, but he shoots it. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he really works hard. Um, I think we beat out uh, Utah and, and, and BYU. So those are some big programs uh, to get to steal a kid out of Utah from. So that tells you the, the talent level that he has. And then uh, we got a, a, a six, seven and a half combo guard from San Diego. And I, when I was at, Fullerton, I was kind of recruiting him, not so much because he was he was six one and scrawny and skinny. I knew his head coach. He's like, coach, he's talented. I was like, but he's six one and a buck oh five going into his junior year. Well, by the end of his senior year, he grew six inches, kind of like uh, Anthony. AD. Yeah. yeah, and he's six seven and a half with the same skill set, you know. And and I think he has a chance to be very 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 good. Um, and then we topped it off with a grad transfer from University of Iowa by the name of Riley Teal, um, a six seven athletic post guy. But you know he's he's someone that's that's gone every single day the last four years against Luca Garza, who I feel was one of the best posts in the country. We played them last year, and so to ha- add that experience to that youth, I think helps us um, tremendously for year two. That coach non-conference games wise, you know they they talk, they're starting the twenty fifth, so you're losing two weeks of the way you can get those money games. So, how's it been trying to get those the schedule done? Trying to you know still play play twenty games in the conference or whatever eighteen in the conference plus the non-conference games and get your money that you need to raise it for the school. So, how's that been so far? I know it's been probably you know a whirlwind for you. Yeah, it has been, um, but fortunately for us, uh, two out of three of our money games fell after November 25th. So those stayed on, on our schedule. And then we had an MTE, a multiple team event that started November 25th. So we we're able to keep that. And that's, that's, you know, part of the money games as well. Um, so for us, we were fortunate of how it, the start date hit. Uh, we still have to find two more games um, and we're in negotiations with a couple uh, different schools. So we're, we're better off than a lot of other teams, I should say, knock on wood, you know, until we get those contracts completely signed. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I saw some of them contracts, Coach, them COVID clauses, those if you if it's fans, it's this number. If it's if it's not, it's this, Coach. I, I feel bad for you guys, man. I, 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 told, I told about my Power 5 buddies, y'all are running a, 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 a scheme, but I know why you do it, but it's not right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 crazy, man. But uh, you know they have the power. That's why they call it Power Five. You, know? you got that right. I, I, you know, <laughs> I've, I've told Josh Pastner, how about you play some of my friends? Oh, you say it's all about you. Yes, yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I want to break my guy out of time, man. You, you can do it, man. You do it for me. <laughs> he has laughs, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I got and I got a Georgia kid on on my on my team. So yeah, tell them to tell them to schedule us. We'll come back there. Yeah, so I'm trying, man. I'm trying to be a broker here, coach. <laughs> 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 now, that's what I got for you. You talk right about our guy, Coach Taylor, man. Uh, he told me about, you know, the golf game you guys had, man, you're golfing together. So oh, how was that golfing trip? And, you know, tell me about his golf game. Between you sprinkling him, who's the best golfer? I want to I know this, yeah. man. <laughs> Look here. I, I, I listened to your I listened to your interview with him. I heard what he said. Now, Yeah, and, I respond and, to it. That's what I've got to add. Get on the record here. <laughs> But you know he what he was saying. He was speaking the truth. You know, out of everybody, my game's the worst. You know, I I picked up the game kind of late, and I started getting pretty good, and then I blew up my knee about you know eight, nine years ago, and I stopped playing. And you know, I could par a hole, and then the next hole, I'm I'm hitting my, like a snowman, ten 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 shots just to get there. But you know, it's getting there. But it was just fun just being out on the course, fellowshipping with with someone that you grinded so hard for, and grinding together, and and just you know, appreciating, appreciating each other's relationship and, and what we mean to each other. Um, it was just great being around him. Um, I didn't get a chance to go golfing with Sprinkle. Sprinkle's a natural. You know, he's one of the best shooters that you've ever, ever seen on the basketball court, and he carries it over onto the golf course. He just – his swing is just so smooth. Uh, but he just makes it look too easy. So I don't golf with Spring. I feel you on that, man. Hey, look, I told, I told Taylor, I'm a tennis man, but my golf swing is everything's going left. I'm going to pull it across my yeah. body. I'm one of those swingers. I'm going to hit it. It's going to go left. Every time, it's going left. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. There's no left. <laughs> Same problem. <laughs> yes, indeed. And now, last one, guy, how was the playing? I know he talked. I know, I know you, you all, you knew his stuff, and you know, he, he knew. So how was playing him knowing that you know his stuff? And I, oh, <laughs> did Intel you have work when, when you, we filmed when that one time? You know, and, and me and him always used to say this to our teams, like, you know, um, you can know everything about the other person, but it, all that matters is how you respond once you get hit in the mouth, you know? And and although I knew everything that he was going to do, you know, the guys that he had on his team, they're straight killers, you know? And, and there's a reason why, uh, like, the games were high scoring, both of them, and we knew what we were going to do to each other. But you can you – can, you can have the best scout report, but when you have guys that that that, uh, that just are about you know that work, it makes it hard. And then you know he 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 changed up some of his sets a little bit. We were joking with each other on the golf course. I was like, "Hey man, when, when you went zone, I was expecting you to do this, this, and this because that's all all we did when I was together." And then you pulled out a flare screen and had a few threes. I had to get out of zone in a hurry. He's like, "What'd you expect?" You know. So, but it was it was fun uh, because my son and I, we would just look down and, and and wait for him to make a call, and then we'd bark out to our team to, to get in the proper position. So it was just a good chess match, and that's what that's what coaching is about is a chess match, and I loved it. I'm looking forward to seeing it again this year, seeing how you guys you know go at it because I know I'm 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 neutral in it. I'm neutral, but I'm gonna be enjoying the battle though. I'm neutral though. I like both of you. <laughs> yeah. no, I appreciate that, man. We we split, man. And I'll tell you what, those games were, were fun to watch, fun to be a part of. We were just laughing the whole time. Yes, indeed. With Coach Smith, good to catch up with you. I hope you and your wife stay safe out there, man. And I hope, uh, you know, you can bring your Georgia, Georgia kid to George. Hopefully we'll get some Tom Crane or Josh to do something for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And uh, before he, he gets out of there, I guarantee you, we will be in Georgia playing somebody. Georgia State, Georgia, Georgia Tech, somebody. So once we do, I'll definitely catch up with you. Yes, indeed, Coach. Hey, be safe. I'll talk to you real soon. I enjoy this always, man. Same here, man. Take care. All right, it's John Smith in the Boss Man Show.